Welcome to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adult ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Navigating Emotions, Part 2 of... Covering chapter seven of the book, The Drummer in the Great Mountain by Michael Joseph Ferguson, a guidebook to transforming ADD, ADHD. Welcome once again to the audio companion to the book. That is what we are here to do in the podcast is to be of service. So for those of you who have purchased the book, this is very much a companion to the book. The book is primary. It is first, but we decided to bring this podcast to your world. And with your feedback, we can tell that it is absolutely making a lot of headway out there and making a lot of positive contributions to you as you're going through the guidebook by Michael. So we are very glad to be hearing those feedbacks on uh, the website, drummerandthegreatmountain.com. Click on that Facebook icon in the upper right, and that's where you've been giving us feedback on the podcast, and we certainly appreciate it. Please keep it coming. Before I take you to my conversation this week with Michael to cover chapter um, seven, but part two, we split this up into two parts in the audio podcast here of Navigating Emotions. Just want to review a few things from last week. First of all, remember that we are constantly referring to the term hunter type, which is based on Thomas Hartman's hunter-farmer theory, instead of using the term ADD, ADHD. Uh, Check out podcasts two and three for more about being a hunter type. A quick review from part one. You had a homework assignment, which was to journal about your last few meltdowns, remembering how important journaling is to this process of navigating emotions. Um, So give us some feedback. Did you start this process with us on the podcast? And did you find that there was some connection between um, the needs and when you had your meltdowns as a hunter type? Remember from last week, we said needs are a key. Needs are like vitamins. Needs are universal. And if you think about needs and the connection to feelings, Michael states that feelings are the lights on the dashboard telling you whether a need is being met or not. And through this journaling process, this is what you're going to start making connections on. Um, I can tell you personally, this, this was a major revelation for me. Journaling is absolutely key. Michael mentioned it last week, so we can't emphasize how important this process is. Also a reminder from part one uh, regarding some tools, which are covered more in detail in the book as well. Mindfulness, which we'll get into in our discussion here today. Journaling, we've talked about getting some kind of support, whether it's coaching through a life coach or a friend that can help you in the process. And there's many, many, many more examples in the book. And I'm going to take you to this conversation now with Michael, where we get into part two, where we cover relationship challenges, work work challenges, and social challenges as well. So please enjoy this latest sit down with the author of The Drummer in the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. This is Navigating Emotions, part two. First of all, good morning, my friend. Good morning. How are you? Good, man. Good, man. Looking forward to a weekend with the family. Yes. Um, and uh, let's, let's, let's get into this. Let's get into Navigating Emotions um, Part 2. But first, uh, give, us, give us some insight on what's going on with you these days. 
Yeah, things are going really well. Like you said, a lot of good feedback. Uh, people all over the world tuning in to the podcast. It's really great to hear that it's helping people. I've, I've heard, we've both heard from multiple people saying that they really enjoy um, the how it's connecting in with them, and they find that that, that there's a there's a kinship with what we're talking about and and our specifically the perspective that we have on ADD ADHD and um and what's very real very um reassuring is that um there's a lot of people that wouldn't necessarily label themselves ADD ADHD but are really resonating with the podcast and this perspective on it and that's i mean it's 10 to 15 percent of the population depending on where you live so you know this is a big chunk of the of the world are uh, hunter types and so uh, it's nice to hear that we're creating um, a space for this to be shared and then you know I've got a couple shout outs to put out this week had a couple uh, nice things show up uh, one is um, if I would encourage everyone to go to givebackyoga.org um, Rob Schwar uh, did an article he's the founder of the organization uh, on on me and the work and uh, the article is called uh, nutrition yoga and a holistic approach to adult ADD ADHD uh, so check it out. Uh, Give back yoga. They bring yoga to underserved communities, especially like bringing health and wellness um, in the inner cities. Uh, he does fantastic work. He's also got a um, uh, a column in um, Huffington Post. So uh, definitely check that article out. Uh, just go to givebackyoga.org. It's going to be the bottom area. You'll see the different blog posts, and you'll see that one showing up. Uh, the other thing is I want to give a shout out to Ken, Ken Rosevere. I believe that's Rosevere. I think that's how he pronounces his name at the Rocky Mountain Compassionate Communication Network. They uh, teach nonviolent communication. Uh, he let us know that they, they had uh, got some books from us a while back. They did a pretty big order and they sold out, which was really great to hear that. And that's how we're getting good feedback from them. And uh, their website is RM ccn.org rocky mountain compassionate communication network rmccn.org uh and then one other thing is we're going through the podcast today on um feelings and needs and navigating emotions so much of that's based on nonviolent communication uh and the main site for nonviolent communication is c nbc.org so that's the center of nonviolent communications and that's c nbc.org Fantastic. Um, well, you know what we might do is uh, let's throw these links up in these podcasts as we're mentioning them. So with each with each post, maybe we can put it on the website as well. So feel free Absolutely. to go to the website and check these out because uh, Michael's very conscientious, which I love um, in pointing out his supporters, um, uh, specifically those that have have really taken to really what is Michael's experience with being a hunter type. Um, but also Michael is very good in the book and on this podcast of mentioning references. So if, if, if something is a research item or something come from somewhere, he's always very conscientious to mention the source. And these people have also turned out to be uh, organizations that, that we're working with. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, let's get into it. Talk to us All about right. part two and, and uh, <laughs> something I know really, really well. I feel like you and I as friends uh, are constantly talking about this. Um, talk about relationship challenges. How does this apply to a hunter type as they're navigating through this sea that is emotions? Yeah. So this is definitely uh, a big area where people, uh, if they weren't diagnosed with ADD as a kid, when you're an adult, the self-diagnosis often comes from uh, in a very, you know, very specific forms of relationship challenges. Um, and I think as adults, it's definitely something that pops in. Uh, and we covered it last week a, a bit. We, we, some of the common challenges are like oh, specifically overwhelm, um, anger issues, um, and then also just anxiety uh, and, and oh, meltdowns, just, just like too much coming at you and you and there's just a very challenge coping with the situation. And then the, however you, some people collapse, some people get angry. Um, everyone's got their own personal style and color, but it's pretty common and, uh, and there's ways of working with it. And so I think as we mentioned last time, the first order of business is if you're not taking care of your health, if you're not 
exercising a few times a week, specifically cardio, and you're not eating a healthy diet, um, those two things are just that alone, it will exasperate any relationship challenges you may be having in terms of your ability to navigate the emotions that come up. So that being said, and that's big, I mean, underline it, circle it, that's extremely important. And I know from many of the clients that I work with, as soon as we start working on their diet and their exercise routine, surprisingly, some of those relationship challenges start to vanish. And we so mentioned some, that last week too. I mentioned that. That's something that uh, I mentioned last week that absolutely, uh, to a T, no veils about it. Absolutely. When I found, and I think we mentioned this and we will again when we talk about exercise. When I found the exercise routine that worked for me, because what worked for Michael, he has a great story. You have a great right. story from when you were 20 and running became kind of your first light into diet, exercise and health. Yeah. Um, and swimming has become that for me. Once you find that, um, I, 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 t I tell you, I think it was right away. I, I noticed the difference with relationships. I can definitely it feel that. It's big, and and that's the thing. It's like if you if you start to track, um, and most people don't make those associations. It's just it's not, especially if you're just if you're on medication, then you're really not understanding how all these other things play in. And the other thing I will note is that I've noticed with a lot of people that when um, with coaching clients specifically that when especially then when they were younger and they were exercising more, they got better grades They you know, they were able to to they were much more even. And as soon as they got out of routines that may have been around school or um, or just something they were doing on a regular basis, um, everything started to fall apart. And they didn't make the connection that, that actually was affecting their dopamine. There was a, it was affecting a lot of the things that are at the core of what um, makes us hunter types and, um, and specifically the ADD, ADHD challenges. I think the hunter type thing and, and, and different age groups is a very interesting um, topic. And, and we're going to get into it, I'm sure, at some future point. My only note on your observation there, again, a personal thing for me and, and friends that have now been friends since college is also – when you're younger, you have those maybe habits, like you said, exercising. When you get into like college, there's a catch-22 there. A lot of people go to college and um, they focus, not focus, but they lose focus um, because as we all do, we kind of there to explore life a little bit. And partying is part of that, whether it's alcohol yeah. or anything else. You sure. do that, then you're kind of hungover, then you don't exercise, then there's that famous freshman That's 20 – and there's, you know, you go down that path and then it's, isn't it always still source of exercise though? We keep saying this a lot. It's because then you follow to that exercise routine that then you pick up, you know, and things get, ex you know, exaggerated. You know, and that's a good point is that as we're going through this, that alcohol and intoxicants, um, without, uh, any moral judgment, uh, undoubtedly play a role in your ability to stay mindful. So, and this is when I work with clients that may be struggling with alcohol or any form of addiction. Um, and you, addiction held lightly. Addiction doesn't have to be like you're in rehab and your whole life has fallen apart. But it's something that you, you realize you can't stop. Or you, you may rationalize and say, well, I, I could stop if I want to stop. But if you're really honest with yourself, you're having a hard time. Because part of it is with ADD, ADHD, um, being hunter types, the wiring leaves us open to being addicted. It's a form of self-medication. It's affecting, it's affecting your dopamine levels. So if that's thrown into the mix of relationships, then it's definitely one of those things to start looking at and say, okay, can this shift? Can I make the shift in, in this part of, of – and is this causing relationship problems? And if it is, the first thing to note is how am I medicating myself with this? And again, here's where diet and nutrition and exercise can make that transition off of a certain intoxicant possible because you're starting to give your body – things that it actually needs and then you're able to and this is not just my opinion this is why recovery programs that focus on nutrition as well seem to work a lot better right um you're able to to move through it and again this 
in terms of relationship issues, these are sort of like core issues that as we're talking about, we go into talking about emotions and, and feelings and needs, the, all these pieces. These are sort of primary. Like if these aren't handled, then you're, you're kind of just uh, – you're, these are Band-Aid solutions to something that's much more primary. Talk to us about um, something I know – is from you a lot of a lot of things you mention in the book um you you say it on the podcast this is your experience in life i love one of the things that you've mentioned before which is which is yours and i love hearing it from you talk to us about how we actually hunter types your theory unconsciously create challenges um to actually stimulate dopamine because i think that leads to reminding people who may be new about the dopamine part of this yes yeah, I think this is this is I almost definite that this I cannot point to studies on this one, but this makes complete sense. So, I, what makes us hunter types? What, what gives us the ADD, ADHD challenges is that we there, there's a, there's a yearning to seek out stimulation. That's like at the core of it has to do with having less dopamine receptors than other people, and it has a great benefit in making us creative and taking risks in in the plus sense of the word we're willing to step out and do things because there's that yearning that's that draw and that same thing can lead to unconsciously creating that in relationships and i've watched it for myself in the past that I watch it with my clients when they're not aware of it. So if you are in a space where it's specifically, again, if you're not exercising, if you're not taking care of your health, then you're going to be in a space where your brain is sort of seeking out stimulation to kind of make those connections that the do- but which, which is what dopamine does. It's the neurotransmitter that makes connections. And if you're feeling kind of lethargic and you're kind of off, then you going to, you might see a pattern where you, create a drama unconsciously and this is where you have to be really honest with yourself it's like am i doing that am i bringing up something that i don't really need to bring up and some part of you knows why way 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 back in your brain oh if i say this then this is going to create some huge issue or you know it may be something else but it's something to look at and um I'm fairly confident now on my own field studies that this this is directly related to the dopamine. It's directly related to that need for stimulation. So again, it's just it's a mindfulness piece. All of what we're talking about on this podcast comes back to mindfulness, being aware is like when does the big blow up happen in the relationship? When when do these things happen? And Which what should become part of your journaling, Michael, if I may, yeah, right? That's exactly. why, just to remind people from last week, Navigating Emotions Part 1, it's mentioned in the book, this is where journaling does come into play. Um, I can tell you from experience um, that in in trying to discover this process of aiming for um, and, and focusing on, on strategies that, that meet both people's needs in the relationship, uh, I can give you as an example that there was no way for me to know any of this, and there was no way for me to to be clear about what my needs were, yeah. to let my partner know how I'm wired, although there's already yeah. a sense of people who are in your life about how you're wired. To, yeah. to uh, th- This transformation process that you bring about in the book, why it's so powerful to me and why I loved it and it's working and has worked for me is because there is a method to the madness. There's a reason you journal so that you see the times of day that you're having spikes in the graph, as I call it, right? You and I yes. you mentioned when exactly. you see those spikes, how do you know? Until, and then you can evaluate, be like, wow, look at that. And Michael, how many times have I told you this? Yeah, that happened. That spike in the graph. I know what it's from. I had an exercise in two days. I know what it's from. You know what? I was at my buddy's birthday party and I had more carbs than I normally do because I made the exception. Now that's my choice. But the transformation on the hunter path is making that and seeing the why coming back to da 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 mindfulness that these are the tools that allow you to be mindful so i just wanted to tell you that's why i love your process is that every there there are things there's a reason everything leads to another point yeah well and so that so let's go right into it so i think one of the big pieces in 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 moving forward and in relation we're talking about relationships not only with you know love relationships but also talking about people like family and everything else 
but specifically, I mean, there's there's a specific dynamic it, that gets set up when you when you have your intimate other. It just it wires very deep deep into us. And so one of the notes that is commonly talked about, not just for for from my perspective or in the book, but um, we're wired differently than other people. And, and there's chances are at least it's chances are pretty high that your mate may or may probably doesn't understand you fully and you they may articulate i don't know why you do this why are you being lazy lazy is often one and it's like why can't you focus on this and it's almost always if you think about it mundane tasks it's things that you don't really want to do and you have a very difficult time motivating yourself to do it and so part of that becomes sharing and again where i encourage you as you listen to the podcast pick up the book read it um explaining to your mate, here's how I'm wired. You need to understand this. Uh, many of the people that buy the book uh, are people that are the companion to someone and they want to understand them better. So uh, just have opening the dialogue up and, and not in a way where, again, I don't like the, the term disorder, but like this is how I'm wired. Uh, and then that continues on to, okay, I know that when I'm feeling overwhelmed, that's when I tend to blow up. That's when I tend to like have the outburst. So maybe you can articulate to your partner, okay, wait, you know, right now I'm feeling a little overwhelmed and maybe there's too much noise or there's something going on that I just, I, I having a hard time handling it and starting to make clear requests of that other person and don't assume that they just know. And again, mindfulness. Yeah. Well, I think there's an assumption that goes on, but I think it's also a little bit of, I'm far from a psychologist, but that, that term, that shame feeling, like yeah. by actually getting into the topic, I'm revealing something that it's, and, and that's very natural, right? That's a yeah. very natural, natural, natural point, feel, thing to be feeling. So those are relationship challenges. We, we want to cover work challenges and some social challenges about navigating emotions and getting to, to kind of know ourselves. But before getting into that, um, I did want to share this. It's in the book, but I, I think it's, it's apropos because we're a lot of times talking about the spikes in the graph and we're on a topic of navigating emotions. So a quote from the artist Fiona Apple thought would be appropriate. She says... I'm such an incredibly, stupidly sensitive person. Everything that happens to me, I experience it really intensely. I feel everything very deeply. And when you feel things deeply, you think about things a lot. And when you think about how you feel, you learn a lot about yourself. And when you know yourself, you know life. And Michael has just some of these gems as you're reading in the book, you're going on, you know, you're working on yourself. You get so deep into this process, which is a great thing. What I love about the book is every once in a while you pop one of these in and it's such a great connection to make, which is what we're trying to do on the podcast too. It's like, oh yeah, yeah there's a, that, that's exactly how I feel in my brain. I've never been able to express it, you know? You know, and that's a great quote. I love that quote that came from uh, an interview of her on, uh, Mark Maron's WTF podcast, uh, which is outstanding. I just can't recommend it Fantastic enough. Fantastic. Uh, and yeah, and it, Jill, like almost everyone on there is a hunter type. I mean, all across the board. And she, that quote is specifically, I was, that's an excellent episode if you can find it in the, uh, the catalog. Well, there's a tie there too. If you, I'd be remiss if by you mentioning that, I mean, we say that in jest, but there is some truth because remember, Michael mentions it on the website a lot in different articles. Um, there is a time, Michael and I are both artists. We are both musicians. We're absolutely free spirits. And there is a, a tie-in in what we've seen. And it's mentioned um, through this process. That's what makes an artist personalities. And Mark Marin is an artist and he has artists on yeah. all the time. So we say yeah. that half and just, but there's a truth to it. There really oh, is. Oh yeah. No, I've learned, I learned so much <laughs> in that podcast, so much better into the book. Uh, and just, yeah, the, the, it's, it, it's the double-edged sword. It's the, the, all the blessings of being creative and passionate and the ability to hyper-focus as well as all of the challenges with addiction and relationship problems, and work issues. And Which that. gets us into. Yes. Perfect segue, my friend. Nice work. Because we're talking about artists and a lot of time artists are doing what they need to, to yes. put food on the table and as I say, got to buy the diapers. Okay, we need yeah. the diapers in the house. 
So that gets us uh, nicely into work challenges, which definitely uh, a lot of us hunter types can can share in these feelings that come up when it comes to work. We got feedback, did we not, this week, Michael, from someone, and thank you for sharing, um, yeah. that said they're listening to this podcast and going through this program as they're in 50 years old and in a yeah. career transition. Yeah. And that's heavy. That's a heavy, yeah. heavy process. So, so take us into work challenges. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I mean, the big ones all come into play, which is overwhelm, probably number one, uh, but also the ability, I would say, um, the ability to motivate yourself to do mundane, non-stimulating tasks. That is a huge one that comes into play with work. Uh, and then, you know, meltdowns, anger, anxiety, uh, anxiety probably be pretty, pretty high on the list for work challenges. Uh, and I'd say um, the two that to focus on would be uh, overwhelm and also <clears throat> just the ability to motivate yourself to do mundane tasks. Um, specifically on that point, um, in terms of however your work is scheduled right now, if you don't have the optimum job for a hunter type, one of the few things to point out is one, you're going to work better in bursts. You're most hunter types, if not all, we don't, or we're not steady throughout the day. That's just not how we're wired. So identifying when you can do certain tasks and especially the mundane tasks, if you have any kind of control over your work environment and your schedule, um, start to note when you're, you do you best do those kind of daily mundane tasks and especially the ones that kind of fall like you may not be doing well or you may have gotten some criticism about or you just hate doing um notice when you do those the best because actually it'll probably be like for me in the morning i have to do the very heavy thinking very specific uh things that that, that aren't necessarily stimulating but they have I actually have to sit down and kind of work out, okay, here's what I need to do. If I don't do those in the morning, they are infinitely harder in the afternoon. So I have to really make sure that in the morning I handle those. Um, the other thing is, once again, I can track for myself and I track with my clients. When you're exercising, when you're taking care of your health, you'll be much more able to do some of these tasks. Uh, in terms of overwhelm, which would be another key piece that tends to come up with people in, and it tend, that tends to come into play in association with challenging tasks for you. And again, it's probably not problem solving. Sometimes it is, but problem solving is pretty stimulating. It's usually the stuff that you have to do that you have to fill out a form or it's, it's tedious and it's something you don't want to do. Um, what I found is helpful for myself and other people is write it down, sit down, make a habit when you get into the office or whatever your job is. If it, this applies to you, which most of the time in most jobs it is, sit down before you get started in your work day and make a list. Write out, here are my tasks for the day. Even if you have a task list, actually even rewriting it again is really helpful. And then, you know, obviously prioritize, look at the list and say, what are the top thing, three things that I need to do start now? And also think in terms of when can I, when is the best time for me to schedule these so that I can get them done and try to knock off all the ones that are the, the most mundane and most challenging. Do those first uh, before getting into the spin. If you can get to whatever your job is and you can have some quiet space, even, I don't know how you can create it or you can request it or you can put headphones on, try to create a quiet space where you can focus for a few minutes and map your day out. And I would add to that, that if, again, where I would recommend the book, if you look in the time management chapter of the book, which is chapter 10, there's a, a whole piece on mind mapping. And that tool is, is has, I found essential. It's how I wrote the book. Um, it's a non-linear way of mapping out your day. It's one of the great uses of that tool. And also you can get online, go to YouTube, type in mind mapping, tons of ar articles on it, tons of uh, video um, presentations on how to do mind mapping. Those are some really seemingly simple things that you can do is just write it down and then the other piece is journal. If you're feeling overwhelmed, if there's just too many things coming at you, try to find a quiet space and just write out, oh, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Here's all this going on. I can't, I don't know. And then just start to piece that apart and try to get to, okay, 
what are some specific tasks that you can take to start dealing with the emotions that are coming up, meet the needs that are that are coming up right now so that you can find some peace. And again, there's some really good exercises in the book. I don't know if we can go really deep into it right now, but those are two and, and these are these are very perennial. When I work with clients, these are very common threads that go through just about everyone that I work work with is like their challenges, if they just start doing these specific things in the morning before or whenever you get to your job, map it out, take a breath, get an overview, and then take breaks during the day. Make sure that you're not just burning all over and over. Take take a break. Make sure that you're and you're taking a real break and not just sort of doing something or on your phone. Try to give yourself some quiet time during the day so you can give yourself a chance to reboot and go into the next party. See if you can cut your day up into to little sprints throughout the day. And I think you would you'll probably have a better um, ability to then navigate some of the things that used to be challenging for you. And that you know, that is in the category of work challenges, but you know, as you were talking, one thing connection I made is, isn't it interesting that we just mentioned in the category before and last week that one of the first steps to transformation for the hunter type is journaling. And and what are you doing when you're making this list at work in this mind? You're journaling in essence, except now it's focused on organization of the mind. And this helped me big time. And it felt silly the first few times I did it in the sense I was like, I can't believe I haven't done this before. It seems like such a basic thing, but we're hunters. Again, we don't think about having a routine, but that's the whole idea of the transformation is setting yourself up for success in little ways. And we're not saying don't be a hunter type. Remember, there's many advantages to who we are. We're trying to use it. I think we mentioned this in the first podcast. We're trying to have this be all assets, all pros being wired like this. And the way you do that is setting yourself up in these little ways. So that list at work, that mind mapping, by the way, I should say that goes for home too. I mean, you, yeah. have, you have stuff to do at home, right? The honey-do list people talk about. That can get even overwhelming. And there's and then we're talking about the tie back to relationships. Well, guess what? Those four things you are tasked with that weekend, whether it's fixing this or upgrading that, write it down, write how you're going to approach it. And one of the things Michael mentions is, in the book is be aware of times of day that you know you're you're best to do certain tasks and by journaling yeah. you're actually going to discover this now you do those tasks whether it's the honeydew list or what it may be at those prime times it's like you know when the moon is full for a wolf uh yes. find those prime times and that's this is it this is the transformation process we could go on and on but i do want to hear michael your perspective on social challenges tell us now we, we've done relationship and work wrap up today's uh and wrapping up this navigating emotions uh, in the second half uh let's wrap it up with social challenges tell us about what you discovered that's great. You know, I want to make one last point on, on just just so I don't forget it. So I think the just in terms of your daily schedule, if you can get out and go for a walk, like find some park nearby your work or wherever it is, get out, get oxygen, get movement. Stationary, being stationary for a hunter type is is death. You got to get yourself up and moving. If you're feeling fuzz, fuzzy, you're feeling muddled, get yourself out. Go for a walk, get some oxygen, consciously breathe in some air. Um, this will help tremendously. Okay, so social challenges. So um, this is, again, things that, that what I've seen come up for myself and other people. Oftentimes there's a, the hypersensitivity to sound in distracting environments can actually create people create situations where people actually aren't getting their community needs met, their needs for connection. Um, and they're not aware of it. They're just having an aversion to certain types. And this is not everybody. Some people thrive, hunter types sometimes thrive on going aloud, very intense, but not all hunter types are like that. Some are very hypersensitive and, and actually tend to seclude. And the seclusion then can lead to depression and other things because they're, it's, in this situation, it's not necessarily a chemical thing. It's that you're not getting your need met for connection and community. And these are core needs that if you don't get them met, then those feelings start to arise to let you know these needs aren't getting met. So I want to um, note here the hypersensitivity to sound and to loud environments. And so... If you find that you're in that category, 
and it's actually affecting your ability to get your social needs met, just start to rearrange how you look at your social needs. Some people are so locked into, okay, I go to the bar, I hang out with people, and this is how I get my social needs met, and which is very common. But how can you go to a talk? Can you go to a meetup? Can you go find less distracting, more focused community environments? And again, you know, meetup.com is a great resource for most places on earth. I think it's all over the world at this point. Um, find if you're if you're someone who, if you're in the process of um, wanting to expand your knowledge, maybe you want to start moving towards starting your own business or expanding your own business. Go connect your social needs to some kind of meetup that's going to, you're going to learn something. You're going to, you're going to connect with people that are going to encourage you on something that you're doing right now with your life. Um, huge. I mean, it, to me, it's like social and support should go hand in hand. And again, it's, it's a conscious decision. You have to say, okay, uh, I'm not just going to go to the bar. I'm going to go find some place where I'm going to meet people and get encouraged and, and, um, and maybe it's your local church or whatever it is. Um, try one, try to find an environment that feels comfortable to you so that you don't feel overwhelmed or hyper distracted. Uh, and then also that you, you're, you're connecting it in with your other goals, as we talked about in, uh, in life visioning, what are my goals? How do I connect my social needs to those? Um, I love, can I just make, I sure you literally, as usual, took the words out of my mouth. The last thing you said, and I wanted to make that point. Thank you for saying that. Um, amazing. Something I've started to practice, maybe it'll help you out there listening, is we talked about how hunter types tend to thrive in bringing in um, uh, uh, money, survival, uh, by doing several things, like being an entrepreneur type. We've talked about this over and over. Let me tell you about setting yourself up for success as a hunter type and how this applies socially to what Michael said. If you need to go, I've got this great business idea, and what did we talk about when we were talking about um, life vision? We talked about a money day. That was one of the assignments, right? It was the money day. Don't do your money day. Again, I'm just talking about personal experience. Don't do your money day in some coffee shop where there's people talking, coffee cups are clanging. If you're a hunter type, you're not even with headphones on, you might not thrive there. There might just be too much going on for you to work on that business plan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is per personally speaking for me. I started to move on projects when I said, no, actually my house would be quieter on that day. And if the house is not quiet that day, have the fortitude and the strength to say, I need my money day. I'm going to go to a library. What, yes. a, what a concept in this technological age to actually, yeah, they yes. still exist out there yes <laughs> yeah and you know what the book wouldn't exist i wrote the entire book at, at, at multiple libraries that's did you really only, yeah oh, all, that's and that beautiful. was my work schedule i would go i would get up and i would beautiful i would set a time and i would go to the library and, and i swear to you i didn't know that library. before saying that so that's yeah. how that's libraries how... are outstanding i love libraries they're they're, they're, they're so they're quiet there's, yeah. a, there's a protocol Ooh, and protocol yes Yes, yeah, and yes. I would say even if you if you're in a work environment that's flexible, it's a great uh, work environment. So if you're working with a computer or something like that, you can go go to the library. Especially, you can find a nice one. I mean, sometimes they're just beautiful. Oh I, yeah, they're the one I wrote the book at too. was. Yeah, oh, yeah. The one I wrote the book at had this gorgeous panoramic view, and I would just yes. sit by the window and yes. work, and it was it was beautiful. Well, also the energy is different, right? Uh, I, yeah. I know no one. I know no one is um, foolish enough to go, you know, plan their new business idea that's going to bring them uh, what they need at a bar. I know that, but we exaggerate yeah. to me. But on the opposite side, it's energy too. You know, obviously that energy at that that bar is not what you need. Um, energy spiritually to succeed in, in, in planning. Um, but what it, Michael just mentioned, the panoramic view to library where there's also a lot of times, at least the ones here in Southern California, some yeah. of them have gorgeous artwork. I'm talking about yeah. paintings, photographs. Well, that's energy too. That's, that's, that's yeah. a calmness that is going through you as you're working on that. And as a hunter type to have that calming atmosphere is absolutely priceless. So I think we digressed a little bit, but I, I, uh, I love it. Great. I absolutely no, love I, it. It's important this, about that, you know? Well, this is great. So I think, you know, just to wrap up on sure. all of this, I think the, the big point that we're mentioning, obviously the first part is like diet and health 
number mm-hmm. one always across the board. We'll mention it every episode. Yeah. But the other thing is emotional challenges. It's not so much about processing it through with your 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 significant other. It's about what specific strategies can you incorporate into your life that are going to meet specific needs that are cueing those emotions. And again, feelings are the lights on the dashboard to let you know whether a need is being met or unmet. So instead of just going into the emotion, trying to figure it out, trying to, to argue it out, step back. What are the needs? Start to build some strategies, some actions into your schedule, some habits that are addressing those needs. And then you may find that, oh, wow, the, surprisingly, the relationship issues start to, to melt. Down. And, and the other thing is relationship issues are universal. They never can usually go away. And there's a certain level of challenge that just comes from intimate communicate intimate relationships with other human beings that's just that's just how it is but you can minimize it greatly and especially removing off the table a lot of the ADD ADHD related challenges through mindfulness and through really good strategies yeah amen a full plate today my friend a full plate today um thank you for that this really this has been big um this two-parter, I feel like, uh, you know, we said in the first half, the few first few podcasts, we were kind of um, getting all on the same page in this community about what we are, how we're wired, and then we were going to start to get to the solutions exactly like the book does. And here we are, um, we a two-parter on, on navigating emotions, following um, a two-parter on life visioning. Really looking forward to what we got coming up. We're going to be t- talking about spirituality and how that plays into hunter type and then really getting into it. The big one that we keep talking about, we're going to focus completely on diet exercise. Absolutely. That's it. It's good. Those, those next – and I would say the next one, spirituality and mindfulness. We're going to go into some meditation practices. Awesome. We're going to kind of do a high level on, um, yeah, what is what is spirituality? And again, that even – I work occasionally with atheists and it's – but at the same level, there's some really core mm-hmm. principles that connect in that are that are universal. So And surprisingly uh, not maybe it's because that obviously meets a huge need. So it's about figuring out uh, what form that vitamin comes for you. That's it. Exactly. Michael, my friend, thank you so much. I know we're taking a little bit uh, of a break next week, but the podcasts yeah. are still going to be coming But uh, as my good, good friend and someone I respect so dearly, I once again, I can never thank you enough for the book and and for all that you do and and joining me here every week in the, the Hunter living room. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, brother. So <laughs> grateful. You outstanding work. And by the way, uh, just want to mention, yeah. uh, give a plug to your music Thank is you. in the opening and the closing of this podcast. Someone just asked about it. So if you go oh, to, nice. I believe it's bviolin.com. Yep. Is that the correct? letter, the letter B, and then the instrument violin, v i o l i n, all one word, bviolin.com. Yes, as we. You and I are musicians in our other life. How can we ever escape that? And uh, well, then I'll (laughs) I'll return it to you, the opening um, uh, music that always plays just before we start the show is also a cut from uh, Michael's album too. So we know it well. We we don't ever, um, we've never done anything on this um, podcast. We don't do anything that we don't experience. And we talk about how a lot of artists are on hunter types, and uh, we, we would both definitely have that in our life. Excellent, excellent. yes. Drummer Thank and the so Great much. Mountain is the book, The Drummer, The Great Mountain. The website is drummerandthegreatmountain.com, so check us out there at drummerandthegreatmountain.com. Facebook link in the upper right corner. We are really starting to hum with your feedback. Please keep it coming. Please keep sharing because it's, it's what tells us, I mentioned at the top, it, it is what tells us how we're doing, what we're doing well, and some of you are asking for more of certain things, and we, we don't know that without your feedback. So again, drummerandthegreatmountain.com. Check us out on Facebook in the upper right. And uh, as always, please take care of yourselves and your health. Be well.
Thanks for tuning in. This podcast is intended solely for the purpose of personal growth and not as a replacement for professional psychological support. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests of this show are not meant to be taken as medical advice. It is very important to seek the help of a qualified medical practitioner when making any shifts to psychiatric medication you may be taking or if you are experiencing extreme psychological distress.